I'm going to read out of the New International Version. Again, Matthew chapter 14, beginning at verse 22. Immediately, somebody shout immediately. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into a boat and go ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. And after Jesus had dismissed them, he went up to the mountaintop by himself to pray. And when evening came, he was alone, but the boat was already a considerable distance from the land, but it was being buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, Jesus came to them walking on the lake. And when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and they cried out out in fear but Jesus immediately said to them take courage it is I don't be afraid Lord if it's you Peter replied tell me to come to you on the water come Jesus said then Peter got down out the boat Lord have mercy and walked on water and came towards Jesus but when he saw the wind he was afraid and began to sink and he cried out Lord save me but immediately somebody shouted immediately again Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him and said, Ye of little faith, uh, uh, because why did you doubt? I want to just preach. You may be seated in the presence of God. And I just want to preach today just for a brief moment from the subject. God has more for your life. God has more for your life. Saints of God, uh, throughout Jesus' ministry, uh, whenever he came into contact with something or someone ordinary, they ended up performing or accomplishing extraordinary things. And saints, listen, uh, when Jesus came into contact uh, with ordinary water, uh, that ordinary water became vintage wine. When Jesus uh, came into contact uh, with two ordinary fish uh, and two ordinary loaves of bread, I mean five ordinary loaves of bread, uh, they became a seafood buffet uh, for 5,000 men and their families. Saints, when Jesus spit in the dirt, uh, it was just ordinary dirt. But when that dirt came into contact with the saliva of the mouth, it became mud and it was used to heal a blind man who was born blind and when Jesus met ordinary men like Matthew Bartholomew Peter James and John they became preachers of the gospel and did some extraordinary things saints so listen when God puts his hands on what is ordinary it becomes extraordinary and saints know this uh, extraordinary uh, and extraordinary uh, cannot exist at the same time uh, and in this life every uh, saint every Christian has to decide uh, either I'm going to be ordinary uh, or I'm going to the next level uh, every saint of God has to make a decision uh, either I'm going to be average uh, or I'm going to step up my game uh, and saints one of the tragedies uh, of the 21st century church is not that we struggle with sin not those who have addictions not those who have bad attitudes not those who have bad habits or bad pro or negative proclivities it's not those who drink too much or who smoke too much or, or even those who sleep around but the greatest tragedy of the 21st century church is our long standing relationship with what is average and ordinary Listen somebody, Jesus did not hang, bleed, and die and get up from the grave for us to be average. Jesus did not go to Calvary for us to be running a meal or for us 
us to be ordinary. Uh, you all don't hear me yet. Uh, saints, as Christians, uh, listen, uh, doors are supposed to open for us uh, if they don't open for anybody else. Uh, saints, as Christians, uh, we're supposed to be blessed uh, even in a pandemic if nobody else is blessed. Uh, healing is supposed to find our address uh, no matter what the doctor says, uh, even if it doesn't find anybody else's address. Uh, Y'all still ain't with me. Uh, the blood of the lamb uh, is supposed to protect our homes uh, and protect our children, uh, even if it doesn't protect anybody else's. Uh, saints, listen. Uh, great things are supposed to happen in our lives. Uh, and you want to know why? Uh, somebody say, why, preacher? Uh, not so we can brag about ourselves. Uh, not so we can talk about how we pulled ourselves up uh, through our own hard work. Uh, not so we can act like we are so special, but so we can brag about uh, how extraordinary our God is. Uh, saints, listen, uh, if you give God your ordinary, uh, he will make it extraordinary. Uh, but, before, but be careful uh, that when God blesses, uh, that when God moves, when, when, when God heals and God performs, uh, that the people that going to get caught uh, looking at old ordinary playing you uh, and miss the extraordinary move of God. Ah, uh, saints, uh, it's in this text uh, that Peter is on a boat uh, with his buddies uh, and they were told by Jesus to leave early and go to the other side. Uh, saints, in the text, uh, Jesus didn't just send the multitude away, uh, but in this text, he also sends uh, his ministerial staff away too. Uh, he said, I don't just need a break from the people. Uh, I need a break from these preachers also. Uh, so Jesus sent everybody away uh, and he went up into the mountain to pray uh, and he prayed until it was evening time and he was all alone. Uh, and can I stop right here and give you a quick sub point? Uh, and that is if you want uh, to move from being ordinary to extraordinary, uh, if you want to move from being average to being the bomb, uh, you have to increase uh, your prayer life. Uh, saints, listen, uh, if Jesus prayed, then you and I need to pray. If Jesus got up and got away from everybody else and talked to the Father, then every now and then, you and I need to get away from everybody else in our lives and talk to the Father too. Listen, saints, when it comes to prayers, three things we need. A prayer life, a prayer place, and a prayer language. If we want to have a better relationship with the Lord. Saints, listen, uh, Jesus here gets away from the people uh, and his staff in order to get in touch with the Father. But the Bible says that while Jesus was praying, his disciples were on a boat uh, headed to the other side. Uh, but they were fighting uh, a contrary winds and waves. And while the disciples were fighting uh, these contrary winds and these contrary waves, uh, uh, Jesus came towards them in the boat uh, he was, and he was strolling on the sea and somebody today listening needs to know that uh, the Christ we adore can walk on things that would drown you and me. Uh, could I say that again? Uh, our God can uh, our Savior can walk on things uh, that would sink us in a minute uh, and how many know that our Savior is extraordinary in every way uh, uh, now, saints, uh, when we read this text, uh, most of us focus on Jesus walking on the water. Uh, but that's not uh, uh, the thing that should thrill us about this text. Uh, why do you say that, preacher? Uh, well, listen, uh, Jesus created water. Uh, it was Jesus that said uh, that water would become two parts hydrogen and one part oxygen. Uh, so if he wants to walk on water, uh, he can do it whenever he pleases. Uh, saints, uh, the only thing thing that happened in this text uh, is that the sea and the water saw his maker coming uh, and it considered uh, the, an honor uh, and it made, it made the sea happy to carry him. Uh, but saints, the thrilling part is this. Uh, there are 12 men in a boat. Uh, they are being overtaken by winds and waves. Uh, the disciples think they may die. Uh, and here comes Jesus uh, walking on the water to 
rescue them. And saints, any time you think uh, you're going to die and you see your help coming, uh, any time you're in trouble uh, and you see your help coming, uh, you ought to get happy. Uh, but look at the Bible. Uh, the disciples were afraid. Uh, and you want to know why? Uh, can I teach for a moment? Uh, see, saints, in first century Jewish culture, uh, it said that if you saw a figure or, or a ghost coming towards you uh, during a certain time of the night, uh, that it was the spirit of death uh, coming to get you. Uh, and saints, the disciples uh, uh, see somebody walking towards them on the water uh, during the fourth watch of the night. Uh, now, saints, by this time in history, uh, the Jews had adopted uh, the Roman divisions of, of time. Uh, and the fourth watch of the night uh, was between 3 a.m. and 6 uh, a.m., uh, where there was very little activity. Uh, and Jesus was walking to them on the lake. Uh, the lake itself was approximately five five miles uh, across from where Jesus, where they started out to where they were supposed to land. Uh, and these disciples have now gone approximately four of those five miles. Uh, uh, saints, listen, uh, the disciples are in the boat. Uh, they're being buffeted by the winds and the waves. Uh, they're thinking about death. Uh, and Jesus was thinking about putting their lives, though, uh, and their ministries on a new trajectory. Uh, saints, the disciples were, were thinking about death. Uh, but Jesus was thinking about changing their lives. Uh, and somebody watching today uh, just said this week, uh, just said this, this month, uh, just said this morning, uh, life for me right now is too hard. Uh, so I'm just going to give up and throw in the time. Uh, 2020 has been hailed. Uh, 2020 has broken me. Uh, I'm suffering right now from COVID fatigue. Uh, I, I, I couldn't even bury my mama or my husband like I wanted to uh, because of this pandemic. Uh, my loved one had to bury alone. Uh, it is all, they had to die alone. Uh, it is all just too much. Uh, but somebody needs to know uh, that even at your lowest point, uh, Jesus is walking towards you to rescue you uh, and promote you uh, to another level. Uh, now, saints, look at this thing. Uh, there are 12 disciples uh, on the boat, uh, but only one of them wants to walk on water. Water. I'm going to say that again so make sure you catch it. Uh, they, 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 there are 12 uh, disciples, uh, 12 preachers on a boat, uh, but only one of them says, uh, I, I want to walk on water like Jesus. Uh, and the Lord says to him uh, who asked, uh, Lord, let me walk to you if it is you. Uh, he says one word, uh, and that word is come. Uh, now, now, saints, I believe uh, that Peter was thinking to himself, uh, I'm tired of living my life afraid. I believe Peter's saying to himself, I'm tired of being scared all of the time. I believe Peter's saying, I'm tired of worrying about the, the same old things. Since I hear Peter saying, brothers, y'all can stay on this ship if you want to. And even though I'm afraid, just like you're afraid, I'm going to get out of this boat because I'm tired of the same old, same old. I believe Lee Peter said, uh, I'm tired of being afraid of trying. Uh, I'm tired of being afraid uh, to step out on faith. Uh, I hear Peter saying, uh, I'm going to get out of this thing and get my feet wet. Uh, and is there anybody besides me uh, who's tired of talking big uh, but living small? Uh, aren't you ready uh, to move some of the mountains uh, that are in your way? Uh, aren't you ready uh, to walk on some things uh, that have sunk you in the past? Saints, listen, uh, I like Peter because unlike the other disciples, uh, he at least got out of the boat. Uh, and saints, let's be honest, uh, most of us would have stayed in the boat. Uh, can, can I be honest? Uh, I can't swim, so I know I would have stayed in the boat. Uh, oh, saints, uh, when you look at this text, uh, we like to preach uh, about the fact Peter uh, was walking on the water, but he took his eyes off Jesus and he sunk. Uh, uh, but I want to focus on the fact uh, that it Peter uh, at least uh, had the courage to get out of the boat uh, and take some steps. 
Yes, Peter sank, uh, uh, but he walked before he sunk. Uh, and is there anybody here who knows uh, that if God said you can do it, uh, you, you can do it? Uh, is there anybody who believes uh, that if you can believe it, uh, then God will help you achieve it? Uh, is there anybody who believes uh, that God has more for your life uh, than you're experiencing right now? Uh, is there anybody who is believing God uh, to do something in your future uh, that he has not done yet in your past? Uh, I'll preach to you. Help me. Uh, is there anybody ready uh, for something big? Uh, ready for something special? Uh, ready for something that's off the chart? Uh, ready for the extraordinary? Uh, are you ready for God to open doors uh, that have been closed in your face? Uh, are you ready for God uh, to increase your territory? Uh, are you ready for God uh, to come on and bless your life? Uh, anybody ready uh, to dare to do uh, what the Lord says you can do? Uh, saints, aren't you tired uh, of being in the boat? Uh, listen to the same old people uh, with the same old excuses, uh, telling the same old lies uh, on the same old day? Uh, uh, somebody's ready for something new. Uh, well, preacher, uh, how do we move uh, from where we are to where the Lord wants us to be? Uh, uh, preacher, I'm one of those people that believe God has more for my life. Uh, but what is it that I need to do? Let me give you two quick points uh, and we'll shout our way out of here in that quick. Uh, but if you know God has plans for your life uh, and you know God has more for your life uh, and you want to get there, uh, the first thing very quickly you must do uh, is you must recognize uh, that you are chosen. Uh, wherever you're at, pat yourself on the chest and say, I'm chosen. Uh, uh, saints, listen, uh, the reason some folk uh, don't like you and they don't even know you uh, is because you are chosen. Uh, uh, saints, the reason some folk are jealous of you uh, is because God uh, has his hands resting on your life. Uh, and listen, for those of us who are chosen, uh, I want you to understand, uh, we, we possess something uh, that our money cannot buy uh, and we never do deserved uh, and some folk uh, can't stand us uh, as a result of our anointing uh, now, now saints let me teach for a moment uh, in Matthew and even in the rest of the gospels uh, Jesus deals with two groups of people uh, the disciples uh, and the multitude uh, now, now saints Jesus uh, is concerned about the multitude uh, that's why in the Bible it says uh, he fed the multitude uh, Jesus is always concerned about the multitude. That's why the Bible goes on to say uh, Jesus had compassion on the multitude. Uh, but when Jesus, uh, as much as he loved the multitude, uh, when he picked his team, uh, when he picked his ministerial staff, uh, he only picked 12. And I want you to look at the team Jesus picked. Peter, who would cuss you out and cut you if you made him mad. James and John, the sons of thunder, who were always talking trash. Thomas, who was a doubter. Judas, who was a backstabber and a thief. And saints, let me tell you this. When people see that you have faults and you have shortcomings and you made some past mistakes in your life uh, but they see that you're in a chosen place uh, and that God is blessing your life uh, they will get mad at you uh, instead of getting mad at the one who chose you. Uh, preach Alphonse Allen. Uh, saints can I be honest uh, if I were Jesus uh, I would have never chosen me. Uh, I, I ain't gonna talk about y'all. Y'all can help me. Uh, I, I wouldn't have chosen a man uh, that is hot headed as I am. Uh, I wouldn't have chosen a man uh, who's as hard-headed as me. Uh, I wouldn't have chose somebody uh, with a messed up attitude. Uh, if I were God, uh, I would have chose somebody better than me. Uh, but can I shout right here? Uh, I thank God uh, that I may not be what I'm supposed to be. Uh, but I thank him today I'm not what I used to be. Uh, 
I'm better. Uh, many of you watching today uh, who are chosen think uh, you chose God. Uh, the devil is a liar. Uh, you didn't choose God. Uh, God chose you. Uh, all of your life, uh, God has had you on, your, on his mind. Uh, not because you've been perfect. Uh, not because you're so smart. Uh, not because you're so pretty. Uh, but despite all your shortcomings, uh, despite all your faults, uh, all your failures, God picked you anyhow. In fact, you and I were picked before we were even born. Yes, we were chosen even before we came into the world. Just like Jeremiah, God wants somebody to know today, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, Lord, I sanctified you. Before you got here, I had a plan for your life. Listen somebody, you are supposed to be here. Do me a favor turn to your neighbor and say neighbor, I don't care how depressed you are. I don't care how much anxiety you have. I don't care how bad your life is going right now. You're supposed to be here. Uh, now turn to somebody else and tell them God has a plan for your life. And saints can I tell you this about chosen folk. Chosen folk know they're chosen uh, and that's why we don't get jealous uh, about nobody else uh, chosen for we know we're chosen uh, and that's why uh, we don't hate on nobody else's gifts uh, we don't hate on nobody else's anointing uh, cause we got gifts and anointing of our own uh, chosen folk uh, we don't try to be like nobody else uh, because we're just happy uh, with who God made us to be uh, if you know God uh, has his hands on you uh, if you know God has fought some battles for you if you know God has blessed you with some stuff you know you don't deserve throw your head back and say thank you is there anybody besides me that the Lord chose and you know you're unworthy anybody besides me glad that when God chose you he looked past all of your faults and saw your needs Oh, saints, listen. Uh, it's good to be chosen, uh, but know this. Uh, chosen folk uh, go through storms uh, on a regular basis. Uh, I knew y'all wasn't going to shout right there. Uh, yes. Uh, listen, somebody. Uh, that's why it keeps raining in your life. Uh, listen. Uh, that's why you have so many stormy situations uh, going on right now. Uh, it's not because you're being chastised. Uh, it's because you are chosen. Chosen. Uh, but know this uh, God is allowing you uh, to go through some storms uh, in fact God has orchestrated some storms for you uh, because he's preparing you for greater uh, somebody shout greater uh, and saints uh, God knows uh, that if you can't handle what you're dealing with right, right now uh, you're not ready for greater uh, uh, but tell the Lord uh, Lord I'm ready for greater uh, I'm going to cry sometime uh, but I'm ready for greater I fall on my face sometimes, but I'm ready for greater. Somebody say, Lord, I'm ready for my greater. Listen, somebody, let me tell you something about chosen folk. Truly chosen folk are going to stand come hell or high water. Did you hear what I said? When you're truly chosen, even though there's some times you want to throw in the town, you're going to, you're going to stand through the winds and the waves. When you're chosen, uh, you don't care how many lies they tell. Uh, you don't care how many innuendos they make. Uh, you don't care how much hurt uh, or how much pain comes your way. Uh, when you're truly chosen, uh, you're going to stand. Uh, no, matter, no matter how many headaches uh, and how many tears. Uh, listen, somebody. Uh, your elevation uh, does not stop with your storm it starts with your storm you, you don't believe me do you in the text Jesus picks his disciples and he sends them immediately into a storm in order for them to get to their next level and saints I'm trying to move on but listen your storm is your authentication that you have been chosen now notice the story never says that the storm reached the multitude that was still on the land. Did y'all see that? But the storm 
from only affects the 12 men that are chosen by Jesus. Since Jesus chose 12 and he sent them immediately into the midst of a storm because when you're pre-picked by God, you will experience storm. And I'm going to let this thing go, but where my chosen folk at? Yes, chosen folk. How many you know you're chosen? You know you're chosen when you know there were moments when you should have died, but you're still here because God has a plan for your life. Chosen folk, there were times when you should have lost your mind, but you still had your mind because God has plans for you. See, saints, too many of us have been erroneously trained and falsely taught that we are cursed because we're going through storm. But the Bible says that we are blessed because of the storms in our life. Yes, saints, we have some disappointments, but we're blessed. Had some hard experiences, but we're blessed. Had some nightmares that prepared us for the next level, but we're still chosen and we're still blessed. Well, the first thing you got to do if you know God has more for your life is you got to recognize that you are chosen. Y'all can get happy now. I'm going to run real quick. Here's the final point from today. Not only when you're when you're chosen, not only do you have to recognize that you're chosen, but when you know God, God has more for your life, you got to connect yourself and imitate Jesus. Saints, listen. In the Bible, when God wanted trees and grass, he spoke to the earth and told it to yield trees and grass. When God wanted fish, he didn't speak directly to the fish. He spoke to the water and he told the fish and all the other creatures to, 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 to come forth. But when God made you and God made me, he spoke to himself and said, let us make a man in our image. My brothers and my sisters, you and I are the imago day of God. You and I are the image of God. We are created in God's likeness and we are called to live like we are God's property. And God expects us to operate in power. Jesus said it this way. He said great things that I do but even greater things shall you do as I go to my father. Now let's be clear in this story. Peter's out there in the boat but Peter is an expert fisherman. In fact Peter and James and John's daddy Zebedee were, were partners in a fishing corporation. Peter was an expert fisherman. He was an expert swimmer but he doesn't ask Jesus Lord let me swim to you. Nor does he ask Jesus Lord let me be able to surf on these waves. But Peter said Lord I want to walk on the waves just like you walking on them. And saints I believe Peter was saying I'm tired of come what's coming please. I believe Peter was saying I'm tired of the normal and the ordinary. So Lord let me do something extraordinary. And saints listen it frustrates God when we give him average. It frustrates God when we just giving him keep giving him what's normal because he did not what he did for you and me was not normal. Oh, saints, what are you talking about, preacher? He who knew no sin became sin for our mistakes. That ain't normal. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of us was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. And I come by to tell you, that ain't normal.